Hi. So now we're going to go over fluid electrolyte and acid base balance. Basically, you have to know something about the body fluids to know how it's balanced. So that's basically our electrically neutral. And the total body water is different for males and females. In the females, it's only about 50 to 60 percent. In the males, about 60 to 70 percent because they have more muscles. Um, and your TBW decreases throughout life. Okay. So the components of your body fluids is that there's solutes, um, there's electrolytes that you know dissociates, um, there's the acid and base, and there's also non-electrolytes. They're like glucose and you know uh, lipids that don't dissociate in water. And um, there is also the intracellular fluid and the uh, ex extracellular fluid. So I'm just gonna say ICF and ECF. So basically, you have a lot of cells, you have a lot of ICF. That's about 67%. Um, that's 0.4% of your body weight in kilograms. And your ECF, you know, the other 33%. 20% uh, of that is made of plasma, and 80% of that is the interstitial fluid. Okay, so the ICF is high in potassium, magnesium, um, HPO4, SO4s. And your um, ICF is low in the sodium and chloride and bicarb, whereas in the ECF, they're high in the sodium, chloride, bicarb, but it's low in potassium, um, HPO4, SO4s. So just think of like this opposite things for ECF and ICF. The ECF likes salt, the ICF likes potassium, okay? So eat lots of vegetables because you have more ICF. All right. So... Basically, if you um, have a lot of water, hypotonic solution in the ECF, the water is going to spill out into the ICF. So thus, you're going to have a like a first increase in water in the ECF and then decrease as the water is spilling over the ICF, and your intracells, um, your cells are going to like swell um, as the osmolarity decreases there and if you have a hypertonic you like you know you eat all the salt um, your ECS volume is going to increase because the um, the water is going to want to spell out of the ICF into the ECF because you have a lot of salt in your ECF um, and your osmolarity needs to be um, kept at a certain level so now we're going to go into the fluid um, balance so your intake of your water should be 2.5 liter. I don't always do that. That's a bad thing. 60% um, of it is from beverages. So water, that's good for life. 30% um, of it is from foods, like, you know, uh, watermelons or other fruits and vegetables. And then 10% of it is from your metabolism in your body. And you lose about 60% of it through urine, about, you know, 30% through your insensible water loss, and about 10% of it through, like, sweat and, like, feces. Um, so insensible refers to, like, when you lose it through your lungs or things like that. <clears throat> Anyways, so you're going to be thirsty if you have an increase in your plasma osmolarity, because you don't want an increase, you want to decrease. Um, you want to uh, have a normal blood volume, so if you have a decreased blood volume because you don't have that much water, because water turns to blood in your body, um, you're going to want to be thirsty, and you want to drink. And so the perception of thirst, um, it's a motivation for water, um, and you drink. So the loss of water, we already went through this, but it's ADH, aldosterone, AMP. Um, AMP is anti-ADH as it'll make you pee more, um, whereas ADH will reabsorb more water and you won't, you know, urinate as much. So there's some disorders of water balance that you ought to know about. Um, one of them is being dehydration, which is what I suffer from most of the time because I don't drink my 2.5 liters of water. That's when your loss is greater than your intake. You urinate more than you take in. Um, 
So the water in the cells um, lose their water to bees, yeah? Um, this could also result from extensive burns, like diarrhea. <clears throat> um, and then you could also experience circulatory shock. It's when your blood volume is so low that circulation can occur. So basically, I think this also happens when you um, are dehydrated. But there's four stages of shock that you ought to know. The initial stage, um, basically you have decreased cardiac output because you don't have as much blood. You have tissue perfusion and your um, it goes from aerobic to anaerobic. The second stage is a non-progressive. So your hypothalamus activates your fight or flight, your sympathetic nervous system. It's like, oh, hey, we're in shock. Second stage, come on. Um, so your cardiovascular respiratory system would like start to respond. And then it progresses into progressive. Ha ha, get it? Um, so this worsens your cardiovascular and respiratory, um, you know, cardio output is like decreased so much now. And fourth is the irreversible. This is really, really bad. You have a patient like this in a hospital with your nurse. Yeah, your interventions will kind of um, help them, but it won't like resurrect their tissues and cells that are already dead. Okay, so there's actually three kinds of shock. There's hyperolemic, vascular, um, cardiogenic, sorry, four kinds, and the obstructive. So hypervolumic, it's a large blood loss, um, more than 30%. Um, vascular, there's actually three kinds. It's where your blood volume is normal, but you have like extreme vasodilation. Um, you know, vascular vasodilation, there you go. And you can have anaphylactic, which your, if you're allergic to something, your histamines kicks in, um, you have like huge systematic like allergic reactions, vasodilations all the way. You have neurogenic, is where your um, your ANS, your autonomic nervous system, um, like fails to maintain your blood pressure. So you have what? Uh, neurogenic. And then you can also have septic in the hospital. This is the shock that most people, that um, has the most number of death, or high mortality for this. And it's mostly due to bacteria or toxins. <clears throat> And you also have cardiogenic, is where your um, cardiac output can't maintain its like pumping actions. So if you had a heart attack, you would mm, most likely go into cardiogenic shock. Or you could have um, obstructive. So if you like have um, an embolism in your blood flow and like can't supply blood to your body, then you have like a obstructive, like blood clot obstructs blood there you go okay so other um, things disorders you have from water balance is also edema is where your tissues swell and that's an increase in your um, capillary hydrostatic pressure and capillary permeability um, and you could also have hypotonic hydration so that's the opposite of dehydration it's when you're taking in too much water and your body can't take that much. You would probably mostly like have um, renal failures and cramps, nausea, vomiting could lead to like death. So you want to have a stable amount of water go into your system. You do not want to overwhelm your um, your body system. 